This video is an introduction to air masses. Now, let's start off by defining what an air mass is. And an air mass is a body of air with a similar temperature throughout, separated from an adjacent body of air by a sharp transition zone. Yes, quite a mouthful, isn't it? But I can simplify that for you because that sharp transition zone is known as a front. So basically, all the front is doing is showing you the boundary between two differing air masses. So where do air masses form? Well, air masses tend to form around the areas of high pressure in the subtropics and also close to the poles. Now, the reason for this is that the air within these areas is very slow moving. So the air tends to pick up the characteristics of the land or the sea that it's over. We know these high pressure regions as the main source regions for air masses. Now one of the best ways I know to visualise what an air mass is like is to think about the area that it's actually over at any one time. So for example, if the air is over an ocean or a sea or even a large lake for a length of time, that will make the air more moist. This air mass is what we call maritime. Should the air be over a polar region, then it's going to be cold. The ice that's around the polar regions will serve to make the air very cold. We know this as a polar air mass. Similar to a polar air mass is an arctic air mass. And as you can imagine, in the arctic it's bitterly cold. The air will flow over a frozen sea and become very cold indeed. So an arctic and a polar air mass are very similar. If air is stagnant over an air mass for any length of time, then this makes the air very dry. We know this as a continental air mass. And finally, should the air become stationary over a tropical area, then the air will become very warm. The tropics, of course, are wet too, and so we know the air from the tropics as being warm and moist. There's also equatorial air, which again is very warm and moist, but we're not going to discuss that here. So let's just look at those names again, and it's worth remembering these. We have tropical air, maritime air, polar air or arctic air, and also continental air. Each one of these air masses brings its own particular type of weather. For tropical air, it's humid and moist. Maritime air is moist because it's over the sea. Polar, or Arctic air, is generally cold and rather dry. Continental air is dry, and that can be cold or warm, depending on the season and depending on the landmass that the air has originated over. Now, each of these air masses will move away from their source region i.e. those areas of high pressure that we saw, and the air masses will become combined and become modified. Now it's this modification process that really is the key to understanding air masses, because each air mass has its own particular type of weather. So, for example, if air leaves the tropics and then crosses over a sea, the air will become what we know as tropical maritime. Tropical maritime air brings moist, cloud-laden air and is very mild. It also brings low cloud and drizzle to the coasts of the British Isles and Europe. Tropical air can also be combined with continental air. In the case of the British Isles, this air has originated over the tropics. It's moved eastwards across the Atlantic, across Portugal, Spain and France, and then is hot and dry by the time it reaches the British Isles. Polar air can be combined with maritime air. This gives us the polar maritime air mass. This is generally unstable air and is cold and showery. This gives us sunshine and showers conditions with deep blue skies in between some pretty hefty showers. Now in a similar vein, if the air comes from the Arctic rather than the polar regions and flows over the sea, then that becomes Arctic maritime air. This is bitterly cold air during the winter months and can be quite showery simply because of how cold the air is. 
polar air can also travel over the land. So we can get a polar continental air mass. This is where the air has left the poles, flows over the land mass of Europe and reaches the British Isles. It's generally cold direction and is also dry. Although during the summer months, if the wind direction is right, it can actually be quite warm but still dry. That completes our introduction to air masses. The next video on the air masses has a more detailed view of the weather that each individual air mass will bring to the British Isles. Thank you for watching weatherweb.tv.